the price of Bitcoin getting a corrective move early this morning. In today's episode, we'll be going through the pure technical analysis. Yesterday, we mentioned the possibility of actually forming a lower high and coming back down to claim those lows again to then look for the long position in an ABC and then we're continuing to the upside. However, there are some things that are going against us after claiming this low. Yes, we are getting a bounce of a few hundred dollars. I am interested in longing this area in a long position and would be interested in longing again if I were to get stopped out and we reclaim again the lows from yesterday. We'll be explaining the scenarios, why we rejected here, why are we bouncing from here, why we could reclaim again the lows, if we break down what I'm expecting, we're going to be talking about the bearish case scenario regarding Elliott Wave Theory, the bullish one, of course, that was mentioned in detail yesterday also to see if we can get that push to the upside, looking at CBD and many other things, guys. We're taking a look at the liquidity heat map and some interesting news that is going on throughout the last couple of days. Remember today at 4.30 UAE time, we do have inflation rate. We're going to see that volatility. Stay safe with your trading. Very likely, I'll be doing a live stream throughout these hours. Let's dive in right away, guys. Before we start, remember that you do have that $500 free airdrop position that you can trade BTC, Ethereum, Solana, many of these different altcoins, guys. $500 to claim for free of a position, guys, just by signing up with the first link down below in the description for Bybit. If you cannot trade on Bybit, you have bluffing, no KYC, just an email and a password, and you get 10% cash back from your initial deposit. So you can use extra for your trading. Let's dive in right away, guys, because I'm going to keep it relatively simple. These lows, for me, preferably, it would have been nice to actually claim them, right? As we were talking about yesterday's video update, looking for that kind of ABC, claim the lows right over here, and then look for the bounce. Now, we did get that rally and we were just off by a few hundred dollars, as you can see, in claiming the high. Why did we form this lower high right over here? Well, we formed a little bit of a Gartley pattern or a bat pattern, right? These are harmonics. I will leave a picture right away here on the top right. We formed the possibility of a Gartley hitting the 7.8 Fibonacci, but we went all the way up to the 0.88, finally forming a bat pattern. Of course, this is very difficult to short because you are in an uptrend momentum, right? You are moving with higher lows and higher highs, and you're looking for that high to be claimed. However, we were forming incredible bearish CVD divergence throughout all of the exchanges, right? We were forming the lower highs on the price action, extreme higher highs here on Bybit, and even on the rest of exchanges right over here already with this price action, not claiming this low. Now, the main reason we did get that bounce to get that push to the upside to claim the highs from yesterday was because we were forming bullish CVD divergence. We were forming lower lows on the CVD, higher lows on the price action, and even more internally here as well, forming these slightly higher lows, lower lows on CVD, getting that push to claim the highs from yesterday. Then forming that harmonic pattern, okay, either the, the Gartley or the Bat pattern, forming bearish CVD divergence. You got higher highs, a lot of people long in here expecting that that high is going to be taken. It wasn't, came down to the lows, and this is the zone of interest, as mentioned on yesterday's video update, right? Really would be nice to actually claim the lows of a range. I love ranges. That is where I know I can trade with very good risk management and I have very good projection moves. I'm looking for this high to be taken. I think it is highly likely. However, we do have the bearish case, right? What happens if we all blinded with the bullish case scenario? We do have the CPI data coming out today close to the New York Open. Will it get a big pump? Will it just get a big dump? We need to consider the possibility, hey, maybe this has been a three-wave structure, just a very, very expanded C-wave here in this zigzag, and the price is just going to start retracing down. Now, what I would like to see regarding this scenario is obviously the price pushing to much lower levels, right? Finally get that power. What could be forming right over here is that this has been a wave one, this has been a wave two in an ABC, and we are inside of the third wave. So this bounce right over here is something that I'm going to be extremely cautious about, right? Even though if we do take the low or not, and we do get the bounce, I'm very much aware of a possible double one, two, one, two, and then another one, two, and you're inside of that 
third wave here throughout the last few hours and we are going to get that major dump now when we zoom in on the lower time frames what i can do here is micro count from yesterday's highs that we have formed five impulsive waves here to the downside right so i would want to believe that these five wave down okay is inside of this abc move that's what i want to believe in the bullish case right because what has happened here in this ABC? We formed those five wave down, okay? Looking really nice, claiming those lows. This is a classic zone for a liquidity grab and look for the long positions. However, what if this is a one wave, two, and you're just in the first wave, you're forming a second wave right here. We're all very excited that the highs are gonna be taken and then the price forms a lower high. I will be paying very close attention here to the levels right over here at 57,000, you know, 400 range, claim the highs of the fourth wave. I want the price to actually push through very aggressively. If we do start forming incredible bearish CVD divergence, they're still continuing to build up. I need to, you know, take into consideration that this might be a wave one, a wave two, and then we're just going to collapse down, okay? I want to believe, looking at the bullish case, that this has been an ABC flat, okay? Not a flat, sorry, a zigzag. We do not take the highs here from yesterday. So leaning on the bullish side, the main reason why this is looking very good for these highs to be claimed is because yesterday we retraced all the way up to the 0.9 Fibonacci, very rare for a wave two, most commonly for a wave B. And as we got so close by not hitting this high, this is like unfinished business, right? We need a finished business here, either with a wick Okay, and then a corrective move or either a blast through, I don't care. But those highs are very disturbing that we did not claim yesterday, meaning that there is a high chance that we could just sweep up the highs. If we would have swept up the highs here yesterday and got this corrective move, then I would have said, okay, double top. There's no real reason here to come back up to these highs because we've already claimed the highs yesterday, but we didn't, which th that is a good sign, okay, to remain bullish on the lower time frames. So I believe in this scenario, what if we are inside of a move wave one right over here, right? Where we have formed a wave one, right? Right over here. And we are inside of another wave one inside of the wave three, right? Which is not completed. This is what I am worried about. Without a doubt, I do see the wave four being claimed, which is close to the previous day valley area high. This is a zone that we are likely going to get rejected. We're going to see the price, you know, getting that choppiness. Um, it's going to be disturbing. If we do continue forming incredible bearish CVD divergence, right? We get those higher highs on CVD on <coughs> most of the exchanges. We start forming higher highs right there. And, you know, it's not going to be looking too great. Not going to be looking too great. I will be definitely looking for a take profit one at the previous day valley area high as we do claim here the uh, wave four zone this box area where we i do think that we're going to see some resistance without a doubt because that is also where we do have the 618 fibonacci retracement right when we do get the fib here and we analyze this area we can see 618 is where the previous day value are high it might be just a sweep guys i'm going to be paying attention to see what we get with the data with the cvd because uh, i would expect the price to push through let's see if that does happen we also have a mini bump and run scenario so that would be a clear sign of strength in my opinion right we're going to get that lower high resistance trend line we've got the bump phase here early this morning would be nice to get that breakout uh it, you know, that would be a sign of strength if we get back above the previous day value area low we're breaking out here this mini bump and run i would expect the price to obviously obviously uh follow through okay this would be a a pretty good sign of strength in my opinion to get that follow through to finally claim those highs from Monday. So a lot of scenarios, a zone to be very cautious, lower high resistance, previous day value area high, the 618 Fibonacci from the movement down. It, it could be a level where we could retrace pretty aggressively, okay? So I would be interested in a short, depending on what happens here. I will be updating the Legends Trading community, of course, for a possible short, right? For a head short, smaller position, just in case the bullish case here in the ABC is not going to play out. We want to be hedging, guys. We want to look for longs, but we also want to realize the possibility of, hey, if we get exhaustion here, bearish CVDs, then we want to look for a possible hedge short position against our, our long, right? If you want to join the Legends Trading community, guys, 
That is where me, the rest of the coaches, provide daily update analysis, give a bit of guidance on what we're looking for, risk management, and those setups, guys. You've got the first link down below to join the community where we are active 24-7. Let's talk about the other scenarios. Other scenarios here. There's so many guys. You've got Harmonic, Elliott Wave, you know, previous day value levels. It does look pretty good. We're looking, tr we are really trying to get back above previous day value area low at the moment as we upload this video. But this has been a proven level of support yesterday. Not too convincing of a breakout. We are forming bearish CVD divergence. I am aware a lot of people longing on Bybit. They're probably just going to get exterminated right including myself just getting accept that stop loss but i would be willing to look for a double bottom here we do not really want to retrace much more than the lows that have just been created throughout the last few hours and there's a main reason why here guys okay i'm looking at this to be just like yesterday's video right i'm looking for this to be a wave four inside of the wave three you know in a brief explanation it's just looking at this right we are still inside of the of a wave three right over here. And I do not want to see the price overlapping, okay? Overlapping this, p these pivot highs, because what I do see here is wave one, wave two, wave three, we're inside of the wave four, we're still inside of wave three on the larger time frame. Looking for that spike here to the upside. This is the perfect timing, as explained yesterday, claim those lows again. Uh, let's see if we do get though that, that bullish pressure up here and start pumping in the next coming hours. Today is going to be difficult. It's going to be difficult because we do have the news in just a few hours from now. If the price breaks down successfully, guys, I'm not interested in a long unless we reclaim back above the lows, right? I'm really looking at the projection here. If we start breaking down, I just need to come with to the conclusion that we might be forming that bearish case, right? ABC. And we're just starting an impulsive move down. Wave one, boom, boom, A, B, C, and a two. And then it's just pushing down in a third wave. This is no zone to start adding to position. Just accept that, you you know, the analysis was wrong. Accept a, a tiny loss. And, you know, this is no zone to actually add to the position. I'm getting into a long because this is, you know, it could get pretty aggressive. If this were to be the case of an A, B, C, you're starting to form an impulsive move down. You want to stay away from longing if you do low, if you do lose successfully the lows that have been created the last few hours. So double bottom, yeah, that is fine. But if we start losing this zone, guys, yeah, you know, this is a zone that to, to not play around till we actually form proof of support and, uh, you know, form a little bit of a range so we can analyze the local range. I'll be doing a, a live stream later on with the news, guys, just to check the volatility and have a good time, answer some questions, all right, uh, that anybody has. Not much more to the technical analysis here. Just keeping it simple inside of the range. Pretty clear. Claim the lows, looking for higher. The bearish case is there, but I'm leaning on the side that the bullish case has higher probability, guys. The momentum is to the upside. So till proven otherwise, we did not claim the highs here yesterday. This is good. This is unfinished business. We need to finish that business with a breakout or with a fake out. It doesn't matter. So it's a good target zone. Let's take a look at the um, different liquidity, guys, because when we take a look at the three day chart here, looking at the liquidity, it doesn't look too good. There's a lot of liquidity beneath fifty six thousand dollars. This is not good when we take a look at the three day chart, right? There's not that much liquidity above fifty seven thousand dollars. There is at fifty eight thousand two hundred and above. But when you take a look at the three day time frame, there's much more liquidity beneath us. However, when we take a look at the weekly chart, we can see that there is more liquidity, okay? Looking above $58,000, 600, 600, there's a lot of liquidity here. And beneath us, there is less, all right? Beneath $56,000, there is less liquidity. So there is more liquidity above 58K. And now that's why I do think that that is unfinished business. We need to get above here, 58,200 in the next coming hours to claim that liquidity. Let's dive in here right away. We've got the news, guys. Stay cautious. I'll be doing a live stream. 4.30 UAE time, inflation rate. We are very likely going to see some volatility. Let's take a look at some other news that is happening. Just in, Standard Chartered Bank just launched a Bitcoin and crypto custody services in the UAE, guys. Mass adoption. This is great, of course, for the long term. Just in, $18,000 Bitcoin have been withdrawn from exchanges today. So the exchanges are getting dry, guys. The spot 
Bitcoin is getting withdrawn. We are in a massive downtrend since 2020, guys. Okay, there's never been as much Bitcoin on exchanges, spot Bitcoin I'm talking about, since March of 2020. Insane downtrend throughout the last four years, right? So that is very, very good, obviously. That should bring a supply shock for the next coming months, despite the price going down to 49K or 44K, right? Let's take a look at this. We do have the inflows going back up again. Of course, we are seeing a bit of proof of support and we have the inflows back up again. $116 million worth of Bitcoin in inflows. So they are, you know, you know, getting that accumulation again after seeing lots of outflows throughout the last week, which is good. 15 of the top 25 hedge funds have exposure to Bitcoin. Massive guys, the big guys, the big, big guys do have exposure to the Bitcoin spot ETF, which is obviously very bullish, very, very bullish for the mid long term. Why are September so terrible for Bitcoin? Three theories, because they're bad for all risk assets. That is a fact. September not being the greatest month, October being one of the best months. So uh, yeah, despite September being bearish, I would still think that October is going to be bullish. It's SEC enforcement season. We do have uh, interest rate cuts potentially also uh, happening this month, right? We are have a bit. We have a bit of a mixed sentiment that it's going to be bearish. Uh, some people think it's going to be bullish. People expect September to be ba to be bad, so it is okay. So September is usually bad because it's it's uh, it's been a month that has been bad throughout the last few years, and obviously people sell and people uh, make it bearish, right? So September not being one of the greatest month, but for the moment we are getting a little bit of a bounce, okay, throughout the last throughout the last few days, which is looking pretty good. And uh, according to the waves and the analysis, it does look like that we are going to get that push to the upside. That is the highest probability scenario. We need to be cautious about the bearish one, bearish CVDs. We do have, um, you know, this level of resistance. We, we just cannot deny it, guys. We can not only be extremely bullish. We need to be looking at both faces, the good opportunity zones. This is why uh, you know, we are traders, right? We can never be on one side of the market. You could have a favorite one, but not always marry. Okay, just being extremely bullish or extremely bearish, especially when you're day trading and you're scalping legends. I'll be doing a live later on. Hopefully you're going to join and I'll see you there.